Il faut prendre quelques distances avec New York pour parvenir jusqu'à l'atelier de Long Island de l'artiste peintre Jeanne Dylan Schneider. Avant d'inaugurer son exposition le 8 juillet à la galerie parisienne Pierre-Alain Chalier, elle nous ouvre les portes de sa maison où ses grandes inspirations sont clairement citées, que ce soit dans ses livres, sur les murs, sans oublier la mère de toutes les muses, la nature. C'est en suivant ce film que nous entrons dans le vif du sujet. Et les couleurs abondent dans l'imaginaire de cette femme au destin tracé. My mother was a painter. I can remember painting a really serious oil painting at age 12. And it was uh, at my grandmother's house uh, of a moss and cypress trees and things like that. And it was quite, quite lovely. Uh, so I was always around the visual arts. La peinture est pour elle comme une catharsis. A lot of people will spend like 45 minutes a day meditating. And they try and take everything out of their mind and put it in another place and, and sit still. I consider my painting meditation. And I can do it four, six, eight hours a day. Um, and I'm totally away from what I was thinking. Um, my brain is, all the world's cares are gone. I just enjoy that um, going into a different place, um, painting, relating colors, uh, shapes, uh, exciting uh, expression lines and things of that sort. That's what's important to me, and that's kind of why I paint. De cet héritage familial, elle en a fait sa vocation. In New York, I went to the um, National Academy of Design and took classes. And here, I'm very closely associated with the Silvermine School of Art, and which was an old, old um, art colony back in uh, the 1890s. And um, a lot of the American Impressionists were around here in Cascob and Lyme, Connecticut. So there's a big tradition for painting in this, this area. Last year, I received this award, which was for rescuing scholars in other countries. And artists do have an obligation to take things a little further, um, to make a statement, or they're able to make a statement. And I thought that my purpose is now to show how beautiful the world is, and it can all go away. We could have trees with no leaves. Um, we could have water coming into our homes. De cet héritage familial, elle en a fait sa vocation. I'm very much inspired by nature's color. I have been known to use my cell phone and go down the street taking pictures. I have to take 20 to get something decent because I do concentrate on the driving. <laughs> Then that photograph becomes an inspiration. And you take the photograph and you start a painting that way. Well, at least I do start it that way, and then I know enough to abandon it, because what's important after that, after the first 15, 20, 30 minutes, is what is on the canvas. In other words, the blue reacts with the green or the yellow, not what was there in nature, although you're inspired by that. Sometimes a little later on, I'll come back and I'll take a look at the, the picture, the photo or whatever, and I'll say, ah, that's great, I missed that. There's another piece of information, because you cannot paint a plein air, 12 months a year in Connecticut. <laughs> Et sa technique est en perpétuelle évolution. This year has been a big, a big uh, turnaround for me. Um, <clears throat> although, every single painting starts with the abstract design and the, the lines that go left or right and how you make the pattern and the design is always very abstract. And then when I put paint down first, I am pretty abstract. I could at a certain stage leave it and call it an abstract, but I then refine it to a little more identifiable trees or bushes or grass or reeds and things. And the reeds in, in this area are magnificent because the wind blows them and they have a wonderful feeling. And like we have them here outside on the sound. And in the summer, they're bright green. In the fall, they're like a, a weedy yellow color. And it's um, very interesting. 
Son exceptionnelle sensibilité à la couleur exprime plus de choses encore que la figuration. I think it's wrong to paint for someone else because that limits you. I think that that's simply what I can say. I consider it great fun, enjoyment. There's a monstrous amount of frustration though. If you can't seem to get it right, you stand back and you go, oh no. And there of course is a stack of paintings in the basement that are just nothing. And as I said, I've learned to recycle some of those, turn them upside down, paint another painting on the top, but use some of the colors coming through to kind of feed off of. And I find that fascinating. There's about four or five that are that way here. And um, I also love this idea of pairs. Um, I think it's kind of fun. And I've done it different ways. Um, I do a painting, I say, hmm, what would it be like if I did this? And then it used to be I'd paint a paper towel, stick it up there, and say, hmm. But now I do a second canvas, and I'm working on both of them. Let me try it over here. And if it works, or I like it, I'll put it in the painting. And then I go back to the other one and say, maybe this one looks better. And so I will work them together. Um, fun, overshadowed sometimes by frustration. <laughs>